Welcome back to Haunted and Historic Australia for part two of The Female Factory at Night. In our research of the female factory, we find that the conditions that the women lived in at the female factory initially weren't up to standards of that time and certainly not up to the standards of today. Cramped conditions, bad hygiene, it even sounded as bad as the Newgate Prison in London where some of them had probably even come from. The female factory was originally meant to only hold around 250 women. However, records indicate around 1828 that there was actually somewhere in the vicinity of about almost 500 people in the female factory at that time. So they must be redoing some of these buildings. Magnificent. Oh, look, it's even got like a little, oh, the name of it escapes me. North, south, east, west thing. <laughs> weather, weather vane, weather to anything. <gasps> oh, why, hello there. Who are you? Oh, look at that bell. How cool is that bell? I like that. Yeah, so, um, what does it say high voltage? Well, there must be something in there. So this could even be maybe there, where what housed the matron and the superintendent, perhaps. Look at that. Looks like the sun's on it. Must be light from somewhere else. Oh, I love this bell. I don't want to get too close to in people might think I'm trying to get access to the building but that bell looks amazing look at that they do do tours here do do they have tours here not at this moment because of uh the plague, the 19 plague, but um, eventually the tours will come back on again and we'll be over here to check it out. Now that thing there must be pretty high voltage or something, I'm not sure. I was actually going to get the K2 out and start putting it here, but I have the feeling <laughs> that it's probably going to go off because of the um what's he i'll just put it here for a second just to see well it's not going off so clearly it's not as radioactive as the sign says would any souls that are still on the premises like to let us know that you're here maybe you've rung this bell well there's a little flicker like to let us know that you're here well it wasn't moving before apologies for the blur I'll zoom in a bit more would you like to make that light up in other colors other than green maybe touch again and make a yellow colour or an orange colour or a red colour if you're there. Is it someone who lived on this premises? Someone who died on these premises? Did you die here? Oh. We've got yellow flash. I think it's yellow. Yep. Were you female? Were you male?
That's okay, it might be just trying to gain a bit of strength to come through. Were you a superintendent or matron on the premises? Were you someone from the asylum? Or the orphanage? You from the orphanage? No, we're not seeming to get anything at the moment. Sorry, I'm zoomed in quite a bit here. I'll go and find Mitch, see what he's up to, and we'll get a little look at some of the other places that uh, that were around here. <laughs> there was a flicker. Someone here wants to communicate. I'm about to leave this area. Ooh. Are you female? Did you live at the female factory? Did you live at the female factory? Oh, I wish my phone wasn't so blurry. Time to invest in a night vision camera. Oh, you like that idea, don't you? <laughs> Thank you for flashing our K2. Oh, focus. Did you die on these premises? You did? Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm very thankful for you to for you coming through and flashing for me. Uh, some of the punishments they'd actually incur in the factory, um, there were solitary cells. They would be fed bread and water. Um, they've got a cap of disgrace. Now I'm assuming that is something to do with um, humility putting on some kind of a nasty looking hat or um, possibly even putting all the head, uh, all the hair, sorry, of the, on the head up in under like a swimming cap, something along those lines. I'll do a bit of research and throw a picture of that up there. And also head shaving. Now that's coming to, uh, we've had someone, we believe, I think that was James Freeman. Uh, in the James Freeman episode, there was someone who, coerced someone into doing a crime can't remember the fella's name at the time but uh, someone did a crime on behalf of some women and they were benef benefited from the crime and uh, before he was hung he name dropped some women and they ended one of them ended up having their head shaved and a frock that said uh, something along the lines of receiving stolen goods RSG but uh, yeah, so they that was a most disgraceful and humiliating thing for the women back in the time was to have your head shaved, especially if you were possibly going to look at trying to find a man or something like that. Having such short uh, shaven head wasn't really that appealing at the time, I could imagine. But yeah, so uh, yeah. Apparently the women were allowed to... Uh, I guess hang out with their friends every Thursday morning it's been said as per 1826 matron Falloon in her interview said that they were allowed to see their friends on Thursday mornings no indication of how long that was apart from maybe going to church or something like that where they prob probably weren't allowed to speak to each other this may have been an hour or two in the yard they were able to speak to people that they knew within the female 
factory it doesn't actually say whether or not they were allowed to receive external visits i'll do a bit of research and see if i can come up with that but i believe that being a prison at this time they probably weren't allowed to see anyone the sickness ran rife in the female factory um, as we know there is only room for 250 yet there's up to 500 women including children there as well there's records that say there had been 24 children at the end of 1829 that had been born into the facility uh, unfortunately 22 of those had died shortly after birth it had been put down um, the surgeon had noted most were due to the conditions that the mothers had to look after them in unfortunately there was a lot of sickness um, in any week there could be people with syphilis diarrhea uh, any kind of typhoid or you know those kind of illnesses were going through the factory because it was such a tight tight space for 500 females so naturally when one person caught something that was quite nasty, a lot of others caught it too. And also, you know, young children are always going to be hit hardest by these kind of um, infections and things like that, sicknesses. Newborns really don't have much of a fighting chance. And there weren't things back then like vaccines and stuff like that. If you got something, you basically just had to wait it out and hope that you survived it. It is noted that the women didn't have any personal objects. Aside from the outfit that they were given to wear, they weren't allowed towels, combs or brushes. Uh, their bathing routine involved a trough that was in the yard. Um, heaven knows how often that, was, that water was cleaned. Um, there was sufficient allowance of soap apparently. So I guess in the yard, in full view of whoever really whoever's around probably constables men you know these women had to wash themselves out in the yard in the open yeah i don't even know what words to use i mean that's terrible uh, when you really do the deep research um they were given some skills and things like that that they could use but when they don't have um ability to keep good hygiene even i mean it really did it was a working prison there's not really any other way you could look at it they were there to for punishment and the men were probably getting it as bad too but for females in particular it's a bit nasty there is a record of a mary ann hamilton who was technically starved to death by the matrons or superintendents in the female factory. There was a number of women who complained about not getting enough food and those were usually treated as troublemakers and put on even less food at that stage than the other females. A constable Stephen had viewed a number of the ladies including Mary Ann rummaging through the thrown out stalks and bones other discarded items from the kitchen area and trying to feed off these and sadly also pulling weeds out of the grounds and eating those as well she was on record for saying for god's sake give me some food which is really sad when you think about the conditions these women must have been under um, I think I believe that some of the matrons were on a bit of a power trip and if they were annoyed by certain females at the factory those females would pay greatly uh, they wouldn't get any food and unlike the women who were in there on bread and water who'd been troublemakers these ladies were continuously made to eat less and less and um, it is believed that Marianne was starved leading up to her death. There was actually a riot at the female factory in 1827. It was to do with the way that there was uh, the way that the ladies were treated, uh, the conditions that they had to live in, as well as the, the rations that they were getting. 
it must have been at a time where the factory had so many women. I mean, we, we touched on earlier that um, that it was only built for 250 females, but there was well over 500 probably at the time of 1827. And it the conditions must have been horrendous for these ladies. Um, I've heard little stories here and there of uh, them not having enough room, um, they weren't able to really wash themselves properly. Um, I mean, I, I can gather they probably didn't have hot water. They probably had to wash themselves in cold water, but I don't believe that they were given cloths or anything to kind of wash themselves with, like face washes, or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I'd say that it was quite harsh, the conditions, and being that it was an overcrowded place it probably made things worse. The actual... Um, the female factory staff themselves were probably few and far between as well as the rations that were allocated for the female factory uh, were probably very meagre um, so yeah you can see why they would want to um, strike or riot as it was mentioned in 1827 that they did it does appear that there were a few ladies that actually absconded from the female factory they ran away but um, it does appear that most of them were captured and brought back and then um, we've we've noted that um, some of them were placed on bread and water placed in the third class and even if they weren't female convicts to begin with and after the riot they were placed in third class if they'd run away and uh, and that would be the chopping up of the bricks and the oakum and bread and water Okay, so we're back over at the um, the oldest area of the female factory, and I was just admiring this archway. It would have evolved in many ways over the years to that probably hundred odd year old door there, but nowhere near the door that would have been there in the beginning, I imagine. Um, so what we're going to do is, pardon the um the phone camera is playing games with me no it's all right we're going to use this we've got we've got the ghost we've got the um we've got this app out here it's been pretty good to us this app over time um it tends to pick up tends to pick up things it tends to be pretty sensitive too so we figured we come over here to the to the area where it is the oldest and I guess most significant. Um, unfortunately, I can't focus on the wall at the moment, but it is definitely here. There you go. Yep, you get a little focal point here. Yeah, this is see, this is this is what you this is when you when you see me do this, this is this is professional stuff. You know what I mean? Like so, this is where it's at. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like it's like you know, it's like yep, okay, like this, this, like this, and like this, and like this. Okay, enough of that. So. We've probably can... offended a few people with those signs. But... Anyway, anyway, look, at the end of the day, I'm offended by this camera. <laughs> so, okay, the camera's playing silly buggers with me, but you'll just have to take my word for it. I am definitely near to this, this wall, which I've been hanging around ever since I got here. Uh... You'll just have to take my word for it. Here we go. See, there you go. See? So I'm not a bad artist. But we've got this app out here. And as far as I know, it takes a little time to warm up, I guess, um, before it will offer some sort of uh, response. So I'd say to it now, is there 
something that you'd like to say to us, something about this particular area, the female factory, the significance of this historic wall um, and this historic area, the vicinity we're in right now. Is there somebody, is there somebody who can hear me and who has the strength to manipulate this particular app and give us something intelligent, give us something we can use. We'd like to hear from you. We certainly, um, we certainly come in peace. We come with respect and all that stuff. We're not trying to make uh, we're not trying to startle or interrupt anybody. Uh, we just hope for a, a little a response of some kind, something that we can use, something that we can actually uh, identify with. So if somebody can say something, please do. We're here. We're listening. We're interested. Hey? Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So there's another... There's another see, there's the lights over there with my young lady's... Uh, got in her hand. Uh, you can... Even you're able... You, you may want to go over and walk towards that. Uh, you're welcome to. Or, if you can, utilise this screen, this thing I'm holding in my left hand, you can actually manipulate it and give us some sort of a word, some, something, a phrase, anything you like, a word, something that we might be able to used to say ah I think we're um, I think we've got a little bit of contact here and it's not false it's not just one of the it's not just a false uh, reading that would be great it's a nice night out but I guess the only issue is the mosquitoes are friggin' hot for me. You know? The mosquitoes are absolutely bloody... They just want to eat me alive. I've put Aerogard on, which is Australia's version of a repellent. Hello? Sorry. I didn't quite get that. Do you want to say it again? Who have we got? Do you have any significance to this particular area? The female factory at Parramatta? Does it mean anything to you, this area? I don't know what you're saying, but I guess we'll check it out after. Who am I speaking to? Is this, can you give us a name? We're interested in having a chat. It seems to be a bit more active over there. Do they? Well, I suppose if they're gonna, if they're interested, they'll come over here. I mm -hmm. guess. I mean. Um, some. Is that some? I thought I heard some, like there's in some. Oh, yeah, there's possum up there. Is it? It's right scurrying across the bloody wall. Can't really see it. Uh, it's just a possum up there. 
Did you see the possum? Whoever's in it. Yeah. You got him? I'm <laughs> Take it easy. So, since somebody. The 20th. Is that what you said? 20th? What does that mean? Can you give me something that I'll be able to identify with? A little bit uh, easier, you know? I'm not sure if you said shameless or whatever. I'm, I do have some. I do have some shame. Uh, I'm only mug half the time. Well, a quarter of the time now. I'm an old man. Oldish. <laughs> what can you see here? Can you see that over here, what I'm pointing at? What's this? Personal? Personal? Okay. Yeah, all right. It's personal. What else? Are you from this area? It'd be nice if this, this would focus. Sorry, I didn't understand that. I'm just trying to focus this camera. It looks like it's fucking not going to work. Because it wants to make a, a fool out of me. Okay. So, go on. What else? If you got anything else you can say? Something that I might understand. Well, like, as I said, uh, viewers, we're going to have to, um, we're just going to, we're going to have to go and, um, yeah, we're going to have to go and, I guess, listen to this carefully. It's a little bit difficult to do it here. Because, uh, quite frankly, I don't know what what's being said here. Um, I like to think that someone's, someone can see me and uh, has an interest in communicating. I hope you do, because I'm here, I'm listening. Uh, it's a shame that there's, this, uh, there's a number of uh, construction projects going on down there so we can't actually head down there and do any looking look at, look at me uh-huh you're looking at me are you yeah what do you think yeah so it's a bit it's a little bit annoying but yeah so I can't really focus on anything around me at this time whilst I'm doing this. So I'll just have to entertain. I'll just have to entertain you with my dulcet tones. Um, for the time being. Oh, and also the person who I hope is communicating with some sort of intelligent response. Um, I can't tell right now, <laughs> but we will, we'll check it out, we'll get back home and we'll review it, and we'll put up on the screen, the video, what, what we, what we think it is, and obviously, if you feel it's something else, feel free to comment, you know, because, you know, we're getting, we're, look, basically, we're, we're doing it as, the missus is, is an absolute champion um, in the short, in the, you know, the, the, the criminals and cutthroats videos that she's been doing are amazing. Um, 
she's an amazing uh, talent for that. Uh, you know, I'm very proud of her. But obviously, it's our, it's our hope, it's our, you know, our intention, and uh, is what we will be doing is getting out there a little more. We've got um, we've got plans to hit the city, uh, hit the rocks, uh, hit a few other places, and get some proper investigations happening here. So if you're if you're with us and you're um, and you're willing to stick around, well, do it um, because we've got some good. There'll be some good good videos coming up coming up in the future. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Hello, what's this? Here we go. Something. Is there anything else that you, you might want to say? I think you're gone, have you? All right, well, we'll stop it. Stand by. Ping all the original stuff. Oh, I forgot about our K2. Oh. Hi. I'm sorry, I neglected you. It's flashing. It was flashing. We got up to the orange, I believe. Hopefully my phone captured that. How did you go with the app? It was alright, I think we've got some work. I've yep. got, I just, like I said on the video, I think we're just going to have to review it mm. um, to get some idea what's going on. Uh, what I'll see is you want to, when you finish, you wanna, we can get in the car and we'll drive, we'll actually drive down there where these cars come from. All right, we'll see if there's anything else to see. Unfortunately, half the, the block is in under construction yeah. or deconstruction, as I was saying, and then yeah, that we went off. We will have to return. Um, even mm. if we return in the day time, and we can go through the gates to there and go on the other side. Mm. Um, because that, that's there's uh, something over the other side of this wall. There's a structure over the other side of this wall. I believe this wall mm. is basically the structures on both sides. See it flashing down? Mm -hmm. It gets up to the yellow. Yeah. Jeez, eh? Someone definitely wants to say something or let us know something. Yeah, well, no, no, well there's something over there that said high voltage, but it yeah, wouldn't be here at this no, at this little seat. No, that wouldn't be I doubt that. I wish the light from the green, from that first green light wasn't so, like, blurry. Oh, no, it makes I it know. hard to see the others I know. when they I light know. up. That's what I was just having a discussion with uh, on video about that myself. Once you can see you. Are you from the female factory? Are you female? Did you live here? Did you work here? Mm. Did you pass away on these grounds? Oh, that was a spike and a bit. Did you pass away on these grounds? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if you can see that it's flashing. Just the light. The other green light. Oh, there it goes. Very good. Thank you for flashing the K2. Sorry we're not able to see it as well as we would on a better camera. Let me see if I can fix her up a bit. Are you stuck here? Alright.
All right, we're just going to move to another part of this area. But it was very nice talking to you. Thank you for communicating with us. Still uh, near to the uh, female factory. Um, we're over here where there's a number of renovations taking place. They're building basically a tram light railway uh, over beyond there, over that side, that's going to run from the CBD of Parramatta, which is down. Sorry if it's a bit dark down there, but it's down in that direction over the top of those palm trees right up there. So I bet I guess it's going to run down, it's going to go to the right, and it's going to continue straight through the road. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of construction going on here. There's a lot of building. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Female Factory Part 2. We hope you enjoyed it. As soon as they have the tours back up and running, we'll be sure to go back and do another night investigation as well as explore inside the old buildings. Stay tuned for our upcoming episodes. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and hit that notification bell so you're aware when we're posting new episodes. Aussie made.